Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Rugby Tonight Extra. Special this week because we put ourselves at the mercy of the players here at Sandy Park and Kai Horseman has kindly agreed to be our guest editor for the week. Very good of you to take it on, Kai. Hello. We are looking forward to the show and we've been having a little think about what we will have for you lined up in the programme. Hey, welcome to the production meeting of Rugby Tonight Extra. I've rung up Jeff and Phil and I thought we could stage something in the gym. Ali might want to have a little chat about your beard. Go again for you started laughing a bit at the end. Are you the producer no, or am no. I? Okay. So welcome to Kai. Kai, you're making my job largely redundant, so uh, so thank you for that. Take it away, all yours. Kai Horseman next to Chiefs. Uh, this is what I've got planned for you later in the show. As I mentioned earlier, Ali, there's a few hot spots in Exeter I want to show you, but it's a short drive away. Okay, I look forward to my own uh, my own personal tour. So we've arrived, Ali. This is the place I wanted to show you. Gareth Steenson's house, his garage to be precise. And it's a place we like to hang out after games. Well, it looks like a great spot. And here is the man himself. How you doing? Gareth, nice you. to see you. How are things? This is, uh, this is quite a little place you've got here. It is, yeah. No, it's somewhere nice where we can come and uh, socialise after a game, you know, after the stresses of taking to the field. So, uh, yeah, it's a good blue place, but we can have a bit of fun. And uh, it looks like you've got quite a sharp uh, dress code here. Am I going to be allowed in? Yeah, you haven't got your jacket on, but you do have a collar. So I think we'll, uh, we'll allow you entrance here today. Excellent. OK, so this is, um, this is your... Your garage, but you've basically done it up, and this is where you hang out post-match. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, I've um, had it now for about a year and a half now, so um, it was a bit of fun, really. It started off with just a fridge in the in the corner, and now it's sort of transformed into what you see in front of here today. So it's somewhere we can come and uh, socialise after a game. Brilliant. And so p pick out one or two bits and pieces. You've got some shirts up here. Any of these particularly uh, yeah. memorable for you? Yeah. Well, actually, the shirt there, the. The extra shirt I got, that's my 150th league uh, appearance that I got this year against London Irish, so it's quite nice to have up there. So, um, yeah, there's a few as well. Um, Andrew Small, on my 100th game, he refereed the game and he gave me a shirt as well, so that was quite nice, nice. as a referee. Okay, and what else we got going on here? We've got signed uh, shirts, we've got um, photographs, obviously. Uh, I saw Craig Doyle up here. Uh, there he yeah. is. He's at the top there, you know. I think that was one of the, um, just an Irish contingent enjoying ourselves on one of the Viva dinners, yeah. yeah. So there's a few, um, few interesting photographs there from a few interesting evenings, but it's nice when you're in here and you can have a look around and remember a few good times. Yeah, we, we won't zoom in too closely on some of those. Yeah. Uh, we've got the dartboard here, obviously. Matt Jess very busy with that. And then, uh, and then the bar itself. And, and behind the bar, some photographs of the, the early days yeah. when it was just in, uh, in its creation. Yes, so um, uh, Brett Sturr just had a bit of an idea one day. He said, come round, we could do a bit of work in here. And uh, it's actually his creation. Um, so a couple of photographs of us actually doing it, and um, it ended up being a little bigger than we had anticipated. I think if you were to see the chalk lines that we have here, um, it's probably about two foot out. So, but no, it was good handy work he did now, and somewhere, uh, you know, it actually looks quite well now. So thanks for letting us in, Gareth. It's a great little spot, and uh, we'll be back in the standoff very shortly. We'll be learning a little bit more about what it's used for, when it's used, and all the rest of it. Join us after the break. Welcome back to Rugby Tonight Extra, a very special edition of Rugby Tonight Extra. We're in Gareth Steenson's pub, the standoff with the Exeter Chiefs, and Kai Horseman has very kindly been taking care of things this week as our guest editor. And by the look of things, he's having one or two problems with a youngster at the entrance. Uh, ID, please, Henry. Oh, really? Yes. <sighs> Come on, mate. 22, fine. I think we just need to ask the landlord if you're dressed appropriately. Uh, well... I'll let Frank in, but I don't know about Henry, but yeah, sure, come on in for today. Cheers, man. So they'll let you in then, Henry? Yeah, just about, cheers, mate. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm guessing you're spending a disproportionate amount of time in a place like this, <laughs> given your injury. Yeah, oh, well, we come down here most, most times after a match anyway, so I uh, get, get a bit of time then. So update us, where are we on the injury? When are you going to be back uh, doing what you do? Uh, well, hopefully, like another four or five weeks, maybe just just maybe a bit more, six weeks. Um, but it's going ahead of schedule, I think. So um, should be out on the pitch running this week. So it's all going well. And dare I say it, this lot doing all right without you? Yeah, I know, doing really well. I mean, flying in the league and obviously getting through into the quarterfinals is awesome. Uh, it's just it's really good to watch. Obviously, I want to get back out there as soon as possible. But yeah, it's, it's going going really well. Big one on Sunday against Saracens as well. Everybody looking forward to that one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, top of the table clash. Um, it's the sort of, sort of games we want, especially down at Sandy Park. It's a, it's a good place to play and 
I'm sure the crowd will get right behind us and it'll be a good game. And of course, long term for you, you've got to be targeting England England tour come come June when he will be fully fit and raring to go. Um, any time spent at Penny Hill or have you very much been doing everything here? I know, I've been here the whole time. Um, <laughs> so it's the it's the England it's the England chat that prompted the music, right? Yeah, cheers, Serge. Thanks, for that, mate. Um, but I, yeah, I've been I spent my whole rehab uh, down here, and I think I will do until I'm until I'm fit, and uh, hopefully get a few games back at Exeter before the end of the season, and then see where we go with the with the summer. Excellent. Well, talking of England. We need to discuss England, we need to discuss the Six Nations, and it's time also to give a little bit of work to a man who's been standing around with his clipboard for far too long. Kai Horseman, it's all yours. Thanks, Ali. Speaking of Penny Hill Park, Rugby Tonight Extra has been in camp. Perfect. My name is Jeff Parlin, and this is my word on the tweet. My name is Jeff. So I've got a tweet here from Julian Salvi. Had Jules over and we had a retro gaming night. Got my Mega Drive, my Super Nintendo out. Um, and played some more games and we got a bit of a spanking. Um, got a lovely tweet from Valerie. Says, happy birthday. Jeff Parlin, have a great day. And it shows a, a picture of me at Newcastle. I think I was 19. I was a big fan of a, a, big fan of a blonde highlight back then. And I've got a tweet here from a Kai Horseman. It says, do you want to come to my 40th birthday party? Hashtag, I'm loving it. So, um, not really sure what he's getting at there, but I think obviously Kai's the oldest member in the squad. Um, and ag again, his forehead is huge, and unfortunately his hairline looks like a giant M. But it's got a nice one from an old teacher, just to remember teaching Jeff Parlin at school. Seeing him out with grey in his beard makes me feel very old. Unfortunately, I do get some grey in my beard and they grow a quicker rate than the rest of it. Thanks for that, Jeff. We're over here with Matt Jess, playing a bit of darts. Jesse, what are you going for? Just my usual 180, Kai boy. Oh, lovely! Jesse, um, ever gotten into any problems with a referee? No, no. Yellow? No yellows. Red? Luckily, no reds. All oh, right. Here's what the referee saw this weekend. So a little earlier on today, we let Kai Horseman loose. We gave him his choice of players, activity, venue. This man got roped in. We ended up in the Sandy Park gym. Oh. Lovely form, lovely form. Two more, two more, come on. What were your immediate impressions of Exeter, having come from Leicester? The one thing that was different from Leicester here was there was the, the inbuilt history of expectation at Leicester, whereas here it's just gradually, gradually coming in. That's from people in the club and around it as well, but um, yeah, it's definitely living up to my expectations. How's the uh, new boy settling in, Phil? Yeah, after his early setback with his little injury, he was... Uh... Talk, talk us through your debut. Yeah, it was a great debut, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, um, three minutes I think. Three minutes and off with a groin injury. Big build up, you know, big sign in. Everyone's really looking forward to it, and uh, he runs out there, tries something a bit different. Isn't it? Big hard line. At first, I probably found it tougher than I thought I would. It would have thought it was because of that injury and probably not getting into the stride of things. But but lately, you know, getting to to play with the lads and we're going well. And once you make that contribution on the pitch and you can make it game after game, then you feel like you fit in. Yeah. Quarterfinals of the of the European Cup. This is, this is big stuff now. Obviously myself and, and a lot of the other guys, we, we, we know we've got the talent and, and, and the abilities here at the club and, and it doesn't surprise us that much really that we can go out and put these performances in. A couple of weeks ago I was talking to Brian O'Driscoll and he found it exceptionally difficult to take care of you. You said you carved him up, didn't you? No, I didn't say I carved him up. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> I said I always, I always enjoyed playing against someone like Brian O'Driscoll because he's, you know, He's top of the game, you know, one of the best centres that's, that's ever played the game. Hopefully I've left a mark on a few other people out there, but... Why has he not been picked for Wales over the years, Jeff? Can you understand it? I haven't got a clue, but... Um... He didn't know who I was before he came to this club. <laughs> no, he's... Uh... <laughs> Look, I, well, like I said, I knew there was talent here, and you know, the boys that get the headlines, but also probably some that doesn't get as much headlines as others in, in Dolly. Um, just a little touch as he showed at the, for, for Shorty's try at the weekend, just the way he straightened up his man. Um, to, to put him away was, was, you know, top quality. Presumably, you still have a, a, a fire burning within to play for England, overlooked by Eddie Jones this time around. But you, you want, you want back in. Yeah, definitely. I am. Um, in one way, I was expecting it, but I felt when actually when Eddie rung me, I probably accepted it a bit too much because I was half expecting it. Um, and afterwards, you put the phone down, you think, well, hang on a minute. Um, I'm at a club that's going to be 
hopefully playing some big games at the end of the year and if you can get in your stride and, and play well, well, you know, it's not like I've got any pace to lose. Um, well, it was so, so you can keep going, there you go. It's Sturgis on the piano, everybody. Brett, that is some talent you've got there. Thanks ever so much. Yeah, I've been uh, just practicing a day and come up with that, thanks. Yeah, the, the, the talents at this club, they know no bounds, do they? Um, let's deal with the weekend, Kai. Huge match for the Chiefs against Saris. Can you knock over the champions? We'd like to think so. You know, league leaders coming to Sandy Park. Um, we've had a decent record there, so we're excited, really excited. Is there a difference in preparation, Gareth, when you've got the league leaders coming? Clearly, you guys have been going so well, particularly at home, as Kai mentions. Will there be any difference to your preparation? No, I don't think so. I think we've been preparing really well for games this season, and um, I think for us it's about focusing on ourselves. Yes, we'll look at the aspects of their play, but I think if we get our game plan right and go and execute it at the weekend, hopefully we can get the result we're after. Well, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be very, very exciting. It's live on BT Sport, of course, from midday on Sunday. Sunday at Sandy Park and uh, our coverage starts on Friday night with the West Country Derby between Bath and Gloucester and if that isn't enough for you, Rugby Tonight is there for you on Monday night at 8 o'clock. That's it for us here at the Standoff Bar in Exeter. Thanks to all the Chiefs boys for, for being such good sports, to Frank, obviously, and particularly to Kai for all his hard work as guest editor. We'll see you all next week.